Hello everybody, welcome back to Steven's Fight Show, and now it is that time to discuss about Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia had his fight against Javier Fortuna about a couple days ago from the time of this recording, and it was a great performance by Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia and Javier Fortuna were supposed to fight, I believe, last July or something, but Ryan Garcia pulled out because of mental health issues, and now the fight was rescheduled a year later. And not only did Ryan Garcia show the levels between him and Javier Fortuna, he also showed where he belongs among all the great young fighters in the lightweight division. So in this video, let's go over the fight between Ryan Garcia and Javier Fortuna. We're also going to be talking about a potential matchup between Ryan Garcia versus Tate, also known as Gervonta Davis. And we're going to see where Ryan Garcia matches up against all his potential contenders at 135 pounds. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So coming into the Fortuna fight, I had a prediction that Ryan Garcia was going to win in the 6th round. And I promise you, I'm not lying at all, that was literally my prediction. And my prediction was right. I thought that if Ryan Garcia was to come forward, if he was to stay composed, keep his distance, throw combinations, attack the body, and use his strengths to his advantage like his speed and his power, then I thought Ryan Garcia would make easy work of Javier Fortuna and that's what happened. The jab was very nice and tight for Ryan the entire night. The way he threw it out where it was nice and snappy, there was not any load up, no telegraphing, as well as the right hand as well. The right hand was coming straight out and it was thrown in better technique in this fight compared to his other fights. If you watch any of his other fights, when you see him throw the right hand, you would see him lunge with it, you would see him be off balance at times when he would throw it, and he would come wide with it too. It was just bad technique from him and he corrected it in this fight. Interestingly enough, the straight shots were used to set up his bread and butter check hook. Every single jab, every single right hand he was throwing was to make sure he was touching Fortuna to be in range to land with his lead hook. We already know Ryan Garcia loves to throw his lead hook. He has, in my opinion, one of the best lead hooks in the game. And the way he throws it, it's not even like normal conventional left hook. It's more of like a whipping left hook, but it's thrown with so much speed and power that it's extremely hard to see. The punch selection by Ryan Garcia was also impressive as well. He was making the right reads the entire night. Whenever he attacked the body and he noticed Fortuna's guard was coming down, he would throw his signature check hook. When the guard was up, he attacked the body with the liver shot. When Fortuna was lunging in trying to close the distance, Ryan Garcia was stepping back just enough out of range to try to land his left hook so many times. The distance management by Ryan was solid. And during the fight, if you were actually paying attention, you could actually see that Ryan was losing the lead foot battle. But to me, I feel like it doesn't matter for him because he was never really intending to land with the right hand. The only flaw from Ryan's performance, in my opinion, was that he got caught with too many wide punches. And at times during the fight, you could see him not stepping in with his punches. Sometimes he would throw a flurry of punches, but he would be out of range. Against Fortuna, that might not be a big deal, but against different fighters in the lightweight division, he could pay for those mistakes. As for Fortuna, Fortuna was trying to land that overhand left blindly from the jump. I think Fortuna thinks that the overhand left is the blueprint to beat Ryan Garcia, but if you watch the fight between Ryan Garcia and Luke Campbell, you would know that that overhand left landed because Luke Campbell set it up, not because he just threw it and then it magically landed on Ryan. And Fortuna wasn't moving enough, Fortuna was just there to be hit against Ryan. Overall, it was a dominant performance by Ryan Garcia and he made Fortuna look like a journeyman. And for the people that don't know boxing, Fortuna is not a journeyman at all. If anything, he's a solid contender in the lightweight division, but Ryan Garcia was just better. So let's discuss about Ryan Garcia versus Tank, a fight that people have wanted for years now. Ryan Garcia has been calling out Tank for so long, Tank has teased the idea of, of facing Ryan in a fight so many times, and fans are wondering when are they going to fight. First off, Ryan Garcia believes a fight between him and Tank would be bigger than Canelo vs Triple G or Errol Spence vs Terence Crawford, and that is only true depending on the promotion. And you have to remember, we're talking about two big pay-per-view superstars, right? You got Ryan Garcia, who has a big following outside of the boxing ring, and you have Tank, who's one of the biggest fighters in the game today he was promoted by floyd projected to be the next this the next that and overall he's entertaining so when you got two fighters that are entertaining and they can both talk trash they can both sell the fight they can both perform if they promote it the right way it could be bigger than those two fights 
but at the moment I don't think so. Ryan Garcia is also continuing to get better as a boxer at a young age. If you separate his last fight against Fortuna, which I believe is the best version we've ever seen of him, you can see a lot of improvements in his game. His technique is a lot tighter, his chin is a bit more down in the last fight, and there was also a calmness whenever he was trying to finish a fight. In any of his other fights besides Fortuna, whenever he would have a guy hurt, he would always try to unload the clip and throw a lot of punches without any timing, without any precision. He would just try to get a guy out of there. He was essentially forcing the finish, but against Fortuna, he allowed the finish to come to him. Tank was also somebody who had a lot of mistakes early on in his career as well. We saw him drop his hand a lot when he was punching. We've seen that the movement and the defense by Tank is a lot better as well. And Tank, he sets up a lot of his power punches. A lot of people see Tank as somebody who has a lot of power, but the difference is Tank is somebody who has power, but he knows how to deliver it. Ryan Garcia believes that if he beats Tank, it would give him a lot of credibility, which it would. But my question is, if Tank beats Ryan, is the respect going to be reciprocal? Since Ryan has this reputation of being a quote unquote Instagram boxer or a YouTube fighter, people already don't give him the respect he deserves. So if Tank beats him, would Tank not get the same respect because Tank beat a quote unquote Instagram boxer instead of a real professional boxer? And going back to the topic of Ryan Garcia continuing to improve as a boxer, people were questioning when Ryan Garcia first left Eddie Reynoso if Joe Goosen, his new trainer, was going to be a right fit for him. And so far, everything looks good. Just because Ryan Garcia trains under Canelo's team doesn't mean that Eddie Reynoso is the perfect coach for Ryan. It's not about having the best coach, it's about having the best coach for you. When Ryan Garcia was with Eddie Reynoso, there was a lot of language barriers. Yes, Ryan Garcia did get better, but him and Joe Goosen look like they've had a relationship for a very long time. Having a relationship between a coach and a fighter that's deeper than boxing is very important in boxing. And Ryan Garcia and Joe Goosen look like they have that. So now going back to the fight, people think that the size difference between Tank and Ryan is massive, which it is, but I really don't think it affects both fighters that heavily. Tank has fought a majority of opponents that are bigger than him due to him being a small guy, but statistically he's done better against taller and lankier opponents, and Ryan hasn't, if I'm not mistaken, hasn't fought anybody that is bigger than him. In my opinion, this is a 50-50 fight in terms of whoever is able to stick to their game plan and adjust accordingly to not put themselves in danger. My early prediction would be Tank by decision, and I'm not picking Tank because I hate Ryan Garcia, that's not the case at all. I respect Ryan Garcia a lot, but from a boxing standpoint, I think Tank can edge out a close decision against Ryan Garcia. So we know Tank versus Ryan is the fight that boxing fans have been craving for for a very long time. But if that doesn't happen for whatever reason, there are plenty of fighters out there that Ryan could fight. And Ryan Garcia has expressed his interest in leaving 135 officially to fight at 140. But I think there are still opportunities where Ryan could still fight at lightweight. One of the fighters Ryan could fight outside of 135, and he has expressed interest in it, which is Teofimo Lopez. In my opinion, that would be an interesting fight. Teofimo Lopez has a fight scheduled in August. And if he can get a win against Pedro Campa, then a fight between Ryan Garcia versus Teofimo Lopez would be a pretty solid alternative, I'm not going to lie. Both young fighters, both very skilled, both have a lot of IQ, it would be a cool fight to watch. However, if we're shifting the topic back to 135, the lightweight division, if we're speaking about who is better than Ryan Garcia at lightweight, I think there are only three guys that are above Ryan Garcia. And those guys are Devin Haney, Vasily Lomachenko, and Tank. I think those guys are better than Ryan Garcia on all levels, but Ryan Garcia is not really too far off on those guys, but he's not quite there yet. I think Devin Haney and Vasily Lomachenko will be able to outbox Ryan Garcia if they box him the right way. I thought the Luke Campbell fight showed us a lot about how you can develop a game plan to beat Ryan Garcia. Luke Campbell was attacking the body a lot in the fight. He was moving, creating angles, using his jab, obviously landing the overhand left, setting it up by left hooks to the body. And if they utilize a similar strategy to that with a couple touch-ups and a couple different assets, I think a lot of them could beat Ryan Garcia. And in terms of him being at 140, there are a lot of fighters at 140 that can fight him. We obviously got Tank, Teofimo, Brandon Lee, who I think could be an exciting fight for Ryan. And we also got Regis as well. Regis is a good fighter, former champion. I think he can bring a lot out of Ryan as well. So Ryan has options. It's just he has one specific person in mind, and that is Tank. And that is it, guys. Thank you guys so much for listening to what I have to say. And let me know. 
What do you think about Ryan Garcia's performance against Javier Fortuna? How excited are you to see a fight between Ryan Garcia versus Tank? Who do you think can beat Ryan Garcia right now currently and why? Now if you guys can please drop a big thumbs up on this video and subscribe if you enjoy content that is related to boxing, MMA, kickboxing, combat sports, whatever it is, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel down below. I upload every weekly on a Friday or a Saturday. And other than that, it's been Steven signing out. Peace.